So this video is going through the structure of a xylem and how it's adapted um, and how water moves through the xylem from the roots to the leaves using the cohesion tension theory. So very basically, uh, water is absorbed by the roots in the plant. It then travels through the xylem found in the root, through the xylem found in the stem and through the xylem found in the leaves. Once in the leaves, the water is lost through the stomata by a process called transpiration. So evaporation through the stomata is transpiration. And it's actually that water being lost that pulls the uh, water up the plant. Uh, this is the structure of the xylem. Uh, it's adapted to be able to transport water in several ways. So first of all, it's a continuous tube. There is no cell walls in between the cells. The cells are in fact dead. So there's no cell walls to obstruct the flow of water. There are no, there's no cytoplasm, there's no organelles inside the tube. Again, ease of flow, no obstruction to the flow of water. The fact that the tube joins the roots all the way at the top to the leaves means you've got a continuous column of water. We'll come on to that in a, in a minute. You have pits in the side of the xylem that allows the water to move out sidewards into the cells that surround the xylem. So some of the cells uh, might want to become more turgid to help support the plant to keep it upright, for example, in the stem. So they would need water and that can escape through the pits. But the bulk of the water goes up towards the leaves so that photosynthesis can take place. We've also got this spiral arrangement of lignin which goes around the outside of the tube. This can withstand the tension because when water is drawn up the xylem it creates tension inside, which is kind of like a suction which wants to collapse the xylem. So you can't have that taking place. So you've got that lignin to strengthen the, the walls of the xylem to prevent it from collapsing. Water moves across a leaf. First of all water evaporates through the stomata. So whenever the stomata are open, water can evaporate out of it. A plant can close the guard cells, close the stomata, um, to reduce water loss. So if the guard cells are, have opened the stomata, water will evaporate. That creates a lower water potential in the air spaces and the cells in the spongy mesophyll. So we've got a lower water potential. So water will move out of the xylem by osmosis into the cells in the spongy mesophyll and then out of the stomata, by evaporating out of the stomata. So there's a water potential gradient from in the xylem to the stomata, so water will move by osmosis out. So in this diagram, it shows that the leaf up here and the roots down here, and the idea that the xylem joins the roots to the leaves. In the xylem, we've got a continuous column of water. So within the xylem, each water molecule is joined by hydrogen bonds. So the water molecule at the top of the xylem is connected to the water molecule at the bottom of the xylem, each one held together by hydrogen bonds. That means that when one water molecule is pulled out of the xylem by osmosis at, in the leaf, it pulls in all the other water molecules behind it up through the xylem. So that creates a tension inside the xylem and draws water up through the xylem. So how water moves through the xylem is called the cohesion tension theory because the hydrogen bonds are joined together in the xylem, that's called cohesion, and the suction that's created when water is pulled up through the xylem creates tension. The fact that all of the water molecules are joined together creates this continuous column of water, the phrase that we also use for the xylem structure. Some evidence to show um, that the plant is under the stems under tension when the water is leaving the plant. So this experiment measures the diameter of the trunk at different times of the day. You can see at midday at noon there's the highest, uh, so the smallest diameter and the, the trunk is the narrowest and that is because at midday the rate of transpiration is the fastest. It's, it's warmer, it's brighter, so more water is evaporating through the stomata. That means that there's more tension as a result, so there's more suction of the water the, through the plant. So that means that they, because there's more tension, there's going to be narrower trunk. Different factors can affect the rate of transpiration. So warmer temperatures and increase in temperature increases the kinetic energy. So the water molecules will move out of the leaf faster. 
a windier environment, so the higher the wind speed, blows humid air away from the bottom of a leaf. So that increases the water potential gradient, so it increases the rate of transpiration. If there's a higher light intensity, plants can detect the light intensity, and if it's brighter, more stomata will open. If more stomata are open, because it's brighter, then more water can evaporate from the leaf. So higher light intensity increases the rate of transpiration. And finally, humidity. In this diagram, it's really humid, which means the air is very moist. If the air is moist, that means there's a low water potential gradient. So higher humidity lowers the water potential gradient, so the rate of transpiration is lower. This is a potometer, which is a quantitative technique, and it's used to investigate the rate of transpiration. So you can look at different factors and how they affect the rate of transpiration. So you could attach a fan here blowing on the plant, you could get lamps to increase the light intensity, you can make the room warmer or colder. So you can affect the, see how they affect the rate of transpiration, those environmental factors. So how this works is you've got a continuous column of water running through the xylem in the plant, through the capillary tube to the bubble. So any water that's lost from the, the plant is represented by the, the bubble moving along the capillary tube. So as water is lost from the plant, it pulls on the water molecules behind it because all the water molecules are joined by cohesion and pulls the water, the water along the capillary tube so it's pulling the bubble along. So the rate of transpiration can be calculated as the distance the bubble moves per minute or you can convert that into volume. So if you know the radius of the capillary tube, you can convert the vol that into a volume. So the distance times by the cross-sectional area of the capillary tube will give the volume of water that was lost per minute. A few other things that are important about a potometer. There cannot be any uh, gaps. or All the joints have got to be airtight, so you can use kind of wax or petroleum jelly to, jo to seal all the, all the joints, like where the rubber bung goes in. So you can't let any air get in. To also assist with that to prevent any air getting in, the plant must be cut underwater and this must be assembled underwater. You need to make sure you've got a continuous column of water running through the plant, through the potometer to the bubble. And to do that, you can't have air bubbles, so it must be assembled and the plant should cut underwater. The tap can be opened and closed. It's closed during the experiment. But if you open the tap, the water moves down and it pushes the bubble back in this direction so you can carry out repeats. This is the type of results that you could get from using a potometer. So the time of day was changed and the rate of flow in a plant was measured. So the, the, um, the distance that the, the water moved per hour. So you can see that as the day goes on, We've got a rapid increase from about 8 o'clock in the morning and a slight decrease around midday and it starts to be a steep decrease around about between 2 to 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock in the evening. So why might that happen? We've got this rapid increase of rate of flow of water. So that could be due to an increase in temperature as the day progresses, an increase in light intensity, which would cause more stomata to open. Both of those factors would increase the rate of transpiration. If there's more transpiration, there's more tension, there's more pulling on that water, which is going to increase the rate of flow. We've got a slight decrease here, now that is slightly puzzling. Possible explanation for this, because on a, well, on a summer's day, it is actually getting warmer, it is actually getting brighter until maybe th 2, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So it can't be due to a de decrease in light intensity. But the fact that the plant will be losing water to increase this rate of flow through transpiration could mean that some stomata might start to close because so the plant has lost too much water. So that would decrease the rate of transpiration. And then this rapid decrease, as the day carries on, the light intensity will decrease the temperature will decrease, both of those reducing the rate of transpiration, reducing the tension, so the rate of flow decreases. On this graph, we've got the diameter of the branch, and you can see, we've shown this before, the diameter of the branch gets narrower, diameter of a trunk or diameter of a branch gets narrower during the day, the midday, and it, during the night time, it, it's the, at its widest. And here we've got the rate of flow of water. So we've just gone through why 
the rate of flow increases, so it gets brighter, increased light intensity, more stomata are open, so greater rate of transpiration, more tension. And the fact that you've got more tension also means that it mirrors the diameter of the branch and increasing tension will create a suction, so it's sucking the xylem um, narrower. So the faster the rate of movement, the narrower the xylem because there's more tension. Here's long answer question marks to describe how water moves up a plant, which we recapped earlier in the presentation.